to my channel. I feel like I haven't been on YouTube in forever. I think the last video I uploaded was last year November if I'm wrong but um, I don't even remember. Gosh it's just been so long. So much has happened and I actually want to do a live update video but for this video we're going to be talking all about my labor and delivery. So firstly before I get into this video happy new year to everyone and thank you to everyone that's been following me on my social media and my YouTube and yeah just last year was just an awesome year for me and Dale. Um, besides having a baby we've just grown together and a lot has happened so yeah we're just super excited for this new year to um just experience more and we've got a new bundle of joy in our home which is so exciting and as new parents first time parents we're experiencing some crazy things every day and some beautiful memories with baby atara so at the end of this video don't forget to just stay tuned for the end of the video because i will introduce you to baby atara so for this video i'm going to be talking all about my labor and delivery now this is going to be an in-depth video about my experience in a Korean hospital and just my overall or overall experience because I had natural labor. So I want to share this with you. I know this was a requested video um, during my pregnancy. A lot of people wanted to know what type of labor I'm going to be doing and my experience in the hospital. So I'm going to share all the details in this video. So if you want to see and hear my experience then just keep watching also don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe down below so you can get notifications when i upload new videos for this new year because i don't have a lot of time on my hands because i have a newborn i don't know how many videos i will be uploading every week i won't have a set schedule just for the time being because when i have the time i will film and upload videos so just for the time being bear with me but i will try and upload a video every week if i can but for this video let's just get started okay so if you have been following me you'll know that i was supposed to be due on the 24th of december meaning christmas eve but baby didn't come so christmas came still i was still pregnant i was 40 weeks and i think one day baby wasn't here so i was actually quite scared i was like i don't even know if i can carry any longer because i was just so itchy and full and like heavy and i just wanted baby to come out so we went to the doctor on the tuesday which is was the 26th, 27th, the 27th and um, we went to the doctor and he checked me and my cervix was still at three centimeters. So I said to him, what, like, what does he suggest we should do? So he said, come back in a week because you'll be 41 weeks. I know um, hospitals recommend like up to 42 weeks. After 42 weeks, if the baby doesn't come, then they have to induce you and you know, induce your labor. So I said to the doctor, I was like, okay, um, we can wait, wait a week. And then Dale and I spoke and then we said, we actually want Atara to be here because my parents were in Korea and we wanted to spend more time. We wanted them to spend more time with Atara um, while they were here because if I had to wait a week, that would push them back even more and they would only spend like a week with Atara. Whereas if we were having the baby on the 24th of December, then it meant more time with her. So we spoke to the doctor and the doctor said, okay, they can induce labor. When would we, when would we like to induce labor? So Dale and I were like, okay, what about now? Like, what about today? Which is the 27th. So the doctor was like, okay, sure. Okay. You need to book yourself in. So I was like, okay, fine. Dale and I were like, okay, excited. Like it hadn't hit me at that moment. It hadn't hit me like I'm going to be having the baby today. So the doctor was like, okay. Um, you need to come back at nine. Was it nine o'clock? Yeah, you need to come back at nine o'clock to the hospital and we'll begin like the whole process of inducing labor. So I was like, okay, super excited. Dale and I left the hospital. We're like, okay, we're going to be having this baby tonight. Let's go home. Um, I had a shower, we ate and around 7 o'clock we were starting to prepare to go to the hospital, just packing last minute bags, packing baby's bag, packing my hospital bag and just doing last minute checks before 
I checked myself into the hospital. So we left around half past eight because the hospital is not that far from our apartment. We left and we got to the hospital. We had to go straight up to the labor, the like the labor ward part of the hospital. When we got to the hospital, you can have a choice between being in like a public ward, which is a whole lot of beds, like almost like I don't know how to describe it. Like if you go to a hospital and there's a whole lot of beds, that's where you can either have your delivery in like a public open space or you can have a private room. So Dale and I opted for the private room because my family is here while my family was there and we wanted like an intimate setting with some music and just more calming and stuff like that. So when I checked myself in, we got put straight into that room and Dale was able to sleep there with me so he had a couch as a bed which was okay and um yeah the nurses just checked us in i had to put the hospital gown on and yeah and then just lay in bed and then the nurses started coming in so the first thing that they did was come in and check the baby and attach um the strap that attaches to your stomach to monitor the baby's heartbeat and your contractions so i had to lay on the bed and that's what they're doing for a couple hours and then they checked and my cervix was still at three centimeters so they were like okay fine and then um so the gynae doesn't come in at any time only when you're about to deliver the gynae will come in so it was just the midwives and the nurses that were constantly checking up on me in the hospital so we were in like I was in bed for a couple hours Dale and I actually managed to have a nap and then we woke up and then the nurse came in and gave me a little tablet which they insert in and that is supposed to I think soften the cervix first and then I think that's the beginning of induction so they put that in and I literally had to just lay down and I opted for the epidural because my pain threshold is like zero it's like zero or actually nothing that's how bad my pain threshold is because I hate pain really hate it it's just I don't know like I don't mind injections but just the thought of giving birth and something stretching and ugh, I was like nervous at that stage so they gave me this little capsule thing they inserted it and then yeah just lay down lay down they kept monitoring baby's heartbeat and all of that and then they put another tablet in or was it first they gave me the epidural yeah first the the anesthetist i think it's an anesthetist he came in and i had to lie on the bed and almost like in the fetal position so you crouch like you crouch down like this and your back is exposed so you and i was so scared i was so nervous because i was like i've heard like you know if they inject it in the wrong place you can become paralyzed and all of that and i was just super scared like at that point so i was literally like crouched like this and dale wasn't with me i think dale wasn't even allowed in the the room at that time and i was just crouched like this and I had my eyes closed and I was just like counting and I was like, please, 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 Lord Jesus, please may nothing happen to me. Please, please, please. And the the anesthetist, he first like puts like a needle in your spine and it's it's not sore at all. You just feel like a prick and then you feel it going into your spine. And then the next thing they do is they put the catheter. In, and you can feel that it's like a cooling thing that goes into your spine and then he just taps 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 and I don't know what they did but I just felt like that and then they close it up and like tape it down and then they put it over here and then they clip it into your gown here so when they um, in, like put the epidural medication in it goes through in this catheter and it goes into your spinal cord and that numbs your bottom half of your body so yeah they gave me one dosage of that first and because I started feeling contractions I think after I think it was after I think it was after they gave me the induction tablet that's when they gave me the epidural I can't even remember um so they the contractions were so bad like 
oh, it, if you, okay, if you have been pregnant and you are going into labor, you know exactly what I mean when I feel, when you feel contractions. These contractions are like period cramps, like on like triple, quadruple times more pain. It was, oh, it was so much it was so sore just thinking about it i was biting dale's hands i was like oh i was just going crazy it was just oh that feeling oh my word but oh i would do it over and over again because it was just such a beautiful memory so yeah they gave me the epidural and that just relieved all like the pain i just felt a lot of pressure because obviously baby's head was bearing down so that's all I felt but no pain at all and they were monitoring it on the monitor so I could see my contractions like the levels on the monitor and baby's heartbeat but I was not feeling any pain so that was the first um pump of the epidural that they'd given me and then I was told to like sleep um until my cervix starts dilating even further so I was fine with that so I fell asleep Dale and I slept oh gosh this was so hilarious guys <laughs> so they gave me the enema and the enema okay everyone knows what an enema is so they gave me the enema and they told me I need to wait for five minutes or was it ten minutes I think it was five minutes so they're like okay wait for five minutes and then go to the bathroom guys it wasn't even 10 seconds or 20 seconds and I had to run and literally I had the epidural was it yeah I had the epidural in me I had did I have the drip on me because they also put an IV on me yeah no 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 they hadn't put the IV yet so I just had the epidural and I ran to the bathroom and yeah that's etc etc what happened and I just was like okay that's done so then came back to the bed I slept I slept I slept and then I think it was around three o'clock in the morning they came back and uh, the nurses came back and they checked me and they said I hadn't dilated so I was like oh okay no it was actually further because we slept for quite a while and they were doing like okay so I lost track of time but it was an hour an hour no two hours before baby was born so um they because they also had given me another epidural because the pain was just so 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 bad it, uh, I think the first epidural had worn off and then I started feeling the pressure and that bearing down and baby's head pushing and oh oh it was so weird because every time i told her i was like oh my gosh i feel like i'm gonna push i can't take it i can't take it i feel like i'm gonna push and he was like no the nurses were like no you can't you have to wait because i was still three centimeters dilated so we prayed we prayed and an hour later i dilated till 10 centimeters so i was like okay nurses came they checked me they were like okay we have to wait until your water breaks so i was like oh okay so we waited, we waited, we waited. So we were just talking and I was lying in bed and talking, talking. Next minute I felt this just gush of like water. And then I, it was like a pop. It was first like a and then water gush. So then I said to Dale, oh my God, my water broke. So then we called the nurses and they were like, check, check, check. And they were like, okay, you ready to push? And I was like, oh my gosh, this is all happening so fast. Oh my gosh, the baby's coming. Oh my word. I was so scared. And then so the nurses came in and then literally when i thought like you give birth okay my imagination especially from looking at movies and stuff normally you put your legs up on like these things on the bed and that holds your legs up and then you push so they came into the room and they put those attachments on the bed and then they were like okay at every contraction you need to breathe and push so i was like okay so contraction came breathe push and then they were like, okay, breathe, breathe, breathe. Okay, next one, next one. And every time I, like a painful contraction came, I had to breathe in and then push and then push. And then they were like, okay, okay, okay. So I did that for a couple of minutes and a couple of minutes came, a couple of minutes and they kept doing it. And then they were like, okay, you're ready. And I was like, what? And then they took those contraptions off and put it aside. And then 
um, they brought all this stuff into the room they brought the baby bed and then all these machinery things and like those green the green cloth that goes over you and la 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 it was just this whole thing and then my gynae came in then I looked at I was like okay and Dale had to go out Dale was not allowed in the room so I was like oh my word this is happening but I felt like I was so drugged up because I had an IV on me I had the epidural and yeah it was just a lot and I was just like okay and Dale wasn't there so I was like oh, I have to do this all myself <sighs> it was so crazy so the guy he came in and he was like okay you're gonna have to push at every contraction so I was like okay there was three nurses two on the side one for the baby one so there was four and there was one by the gynae and then the gynae was sitting there at the bottom of my legs and then they were like okay three two one at the contraction push so i was like push 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 guys at the amount of pushing that i did i didn't realize that the baby was out um until i heard screaming so we pushed i pushed i pushed i pushed and it felt like that the epidural had worn off because where I was pushing it was actually so painful it was the most excruciating pain and pressure so I don't know if the epidural was supposed to help or not because then if the epidural was supposed to numb you then what was the point of having it if I could feel it like do you understand what I'm saying so I don't know well it's my first time having a baby so I don't know if that was the pain that you're supposed to feel anyway so doctor was like okay push and there was one point where he was like push and I said I can't I can't they were like no the baby's in and I was like I can't I can't it's too sore and the nurse literally went on top of my tummy and she pushed like that and I was just like <sighs> and then I pushed and the baby was out well that's all I heard, I heard screaming and then they called Dale in and then Dale cut the umbilical cord and then they took baby aside and put her in that thing, that like baby bed and then they cleaned it. I'll insert the video here yeah, of what Dale captured at Hello, that moment princess. and you can watch it. Hello. So you can see Hello. where baby just came out and then they cleaning her and just checking her toes and her, her eyes and whatever and her fingers and stuff like that and then the gynae says to me i had to do an episotomy so an episotomy is where they cut you so instead of tearing which is worse than being cut they cut me and that just makes it easier for baby to come through so he did that and he was stitching me i could feel everything so sore so that's why i'm saying i don't know if the epidural was worth it but yeah it helped with contractions but at actual delivery i could feel it but yeah, so then they wrapped baby up and they gave it to me, you can see in the video, and I just got to hold her a little bit and then they took her away. Now I know in some hospitals, especially back home, when you get baby, baby is directly put on your chest for skin to skin contact. Here in Korea, it's not that common to do that. So they wrap baby up, they allow you to hold her and then they take her away and you can only see baby in a couple of hours which is like so insane but different country not my country i have to abide by the rules so that's what i had to do which was kind of sad for me because i wanted to bond with baby atara but we couldn't not even dale dale wasn't even allowed in the delivery room so yeah it's very hard but so they took baby away and then another nurse like i think it was an hour later brought Atara back and my family was allowed to come into the room and then we were allowed to take pictures with baby and I was allowed to hold her but I was still not allowed to breastfeed or anything so we held her we held her with Dale managed to hold her as well but that's all only Dale and I and then my parents managed to take pictures I'll insert pictures now of that actual scene at the hospital and then the nurse took the baby away so yeah that was the labor delivery part that was how it was for a couple hours in the hospital in that labor ward now i'm going to talk to you about afterwards after baby was born and my experience at the hospital recovering okay so now baby atara is born and i've finished labor and delivery and then 
the nurses came in and they were like okay now we're going to transfer like transport you to your recovery room so in the beginning before this all happened they asked us what type of room we wanted and because the language barrier is so hard here when they asked us they asked us if we want 10 people or a room with one or two so we thought they meant um, do we want like amount of family members in our room or or just one person so we were like okay we want the one with two people because it was just going to be Dale and me or Dale and my mom in the delivery room so then they were like okay fine so when it was time for me for recovery they transferred me to a room of two so it was another lady that was recovering and myself but I requested well when Dale and I requested we went to our own private room because my parents were going to come visit and my siblings and then people from the church and stuff like that. So it was just a huge mis miscommunication. I, at the end of the day, I ended up getting transferred to my recovery room, which is a, was which was a private room. Um, so when we got there, I was still in a lot of pain. I had to be put in a wheelchair and transferred up to the level where to recover. And yeah, they gave me food, seaweed soup. So if you didn't know, in Korea, seaweed soup is high nutritional valued soup, especially for pregnant women and for women that are recovering from birth. So this is supposed to help you recover, give you enough nutrients and also just, yeah, just help you with your recovery after pregnancy. So that's what I ate morning, lunch and supper all day every day so when i got to the recovery room that's what they gave me and then they just told me i needed to recover i wanted to shower but i was just in so much pain so i couldn't but i just lay there dale went back home my mom stayed with my sister and yeah they looked after me for a couple hours until dale returned and then they called me to say that i can come down and breastfeed baby so i went down to um ex to give baby some milk and as I was walking I was in so much pain I was walking with the I felt so faint now if you've been following me you'll know that I have an iron deficiency so I was on iron tablets throughout my whole pregnancy and um, so when I was going down to go and breastfeed I, I actually almost fainted so they had to give me an iron infusion which is a drip that they put on me and I couldn't breastfeed that evening so I didn't see baby Atara so all my family went down to the viewing and to go and see baby while I was just recovering upstairs in the bed because I was so sick I had the drip on me and I was just so exhausted and just felt so drained so the iron infusion helped a lot because I was on that for the whole night so I wasn't allowed to feed her and see her until the next day so I slept and I woke up the next day and they phoned me to say you can come and breastfeed so I managed to go downstairs, breastfed her for a little bit. She didn't latch at all. It was the hardest thing, the most emotional thing ever. That's one of the things um, after being pregnant that hit me the hardest is that I couldn't breastfeed her because she wasn't latching. So the nurses told me that her mouth was too small to latch onto my actual nipple because the nipple size was too big. So they... Um, suggested that I buy nipple covers so it's these silicone covers I will um, insert a picture here it's a silicone like nipple size so that covers the actual nipple and it almost resembles like a bottle so it's easy for them to grab and then to drink from your breast so I had that and I found that she was drinking a little bit more but as I said my breast milk wasn't coming out a lot so that helped a lot but the nurses also gave me some formula to feed her so i stayed for if i gave birth thursday friday saturday i was out and they ask you to stay for about three days just for recovery if you're having natural labor but c-sections you're around for a week in the hospital but i was so happy just to go out and just be home so i left on saturday i had to check out and i finally got to see the baby and hold her and take her home um like properly besides breastfeeding because when you're in the hospital and you're going to breastfeed the requirement is like you have to sanitize your whole self so 
even though you're in like the hospital gown when you go down they make you wear like like a clear apron it's like plastic not plastic like almost like like wrap like cling wrap that you have to wear over your whole body and then you have to wear gloves and then you sanitize yourself so when you're breastfeeding the only connection that you have is her breast and you like there's no skin to skin like she can touch you or anything because you're wearing this huge apron thingy and gloves and it's just like it's so weird it's so weird but it's their culture so i can't well it's not their culture it's just yeah korea so yeah that was the whole labor and delivery story of our experience with baby atara now i'm gonna introduce you to baby atara so this is princess atara She's now seven weeks old and she was born on the 28th of December at 12.09 and she's growing so big so finally you guys can meet her. I know a lot of you have been asking for a video about her so this is just a sneak peek of little Princess Atara. You see her all over my social media and her little faces that she pulls for us and just little sneak peeks of our life with this little princess. I don't know if she's giving you guys a smile. No smile. Dale's are behind the camera trying to make her smile. But, but smile for the people. Smile for YouTube. Smile for YouTube. She's maybe a bit grumpy because she just woke up from her nap and had to change her diaper. But hopefully in future videos when she does feature on YouTube, she can be smiling and laughing as she grows. But yeah, say hello to YouTube, Bubbas. Say hello to YouTube, to all your fans out there that want to see your pretty little face. Look here. Look here, Nunes. Okay, guys. That's, I think, enough for her that she can concentrate on the camera. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye, YouTube. Okay, now that you've seen baby Etara, I want to thank you for watching this video and listening to my labor delivery video. I hope you enjoyed it and got some insightful information of my experience in Korea and the hospitals. And yeah, thank you for all the love and support and I will be back to filming new videos. As I said in the beginning of this video, I won't have a schedule, but I will be trying to upload one video a week. But I love you guys so much and thanks for the support. I hope you have a blessed new year. And yeah, I love you guys. Stay blessed and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.